Hello everybody, welcome back to Provis Gaming and Democracy 3 Presidential Suite. Playing as Sweden, yes, we are back with the mod pack. And it looks like in the last video, people were pretty darn excited for this series. I know that I certainly am, so let's move on, shall we? In the last video, we did take a look at several of the negative and positive events that have been added into the game. There are quite a few of them, no doubt about it, quite a few. We're trying to deal with road accidents right now. We were able to get rid of the farmer protests but we still have some lingering corruption which could pose a bit of a problem. Now, the problem with corruption is it doesn't really go away, not easily. You have to get it down to zero to actually get rid of the stop trigger entirely. So, corruption will probably always be an event, but we can limit its effects the lower it is. So at least that is something. I did, by the way, see a comment about the jury trial in the last video. Uh, I was kind of confused as to why crime was going up the more universal we did jury trials. Uh, pretty good theory, actually, that maybe we're kind of clogging up the system and um, we can't deal with crime as effectively because we have too many uh, jury trials. So, that could very well be a thing. I really have no idea. But let's go ahead and move on into year two and see how things are looking. Ban smokeless tobacco. Ooh, e-cigs. Okay. Some of our citizens use smokeless tobacco products. Tobacco companies promote them as a safe and convenient alternative to smoking, but medical experts warn that there are still health risks. They are also concerned that these products have a lower threshold of usage than cigarettes, which I suspect means that even the more casual user uh, could try something like e-cigarettes, whereas they might shy away from full tobacco. At least that's a theory. It's going to be more widespread, even if it theoretically does less damage. So, do we allow it? If smokers move over to smokeless tobacco, we can get rid of the fire risk and productivity loss from smoking breaks at work. We can also decrease asthma considerably. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Also, we can collect tax that covers the negative health effects. Are you giving me that option? I have no idea. Or do we ban it? Banning cigarettes may not be po politically viable, but this is a step towards less tobacco use. Smokeless tobacco may be less dangerous, but it also has a lower threshold for consumption. By the way, we have banned many food additives, which are far less dangerous than these tobacco products. Well, you're also not really supposed to consume tobacco in the same way, but I see your point. Well, we're trying to go for a slightly more libertarian-ish playthrough, and I think this will still appeal to the liberals here. So, we're going to allow the smokeless tobacco. Uh, in theory, it shouldn't do as much damage, but I'll admit that the, uh, the science is not quite as conclusive on that yet because there hasn't been enough time to come up with, you know, long-term studies as to the effects, but we'll see what happens. All right, right now, still have a pretty good surplus of 80, almost 84 billion kronas? Kr kr kronas? So, um, I, don't, I don't speak Swedish, so, you know, you'll have to forgive me for butchering your language. I'm, I'm sure that I am, but anyway. All right, so, I still want to tackle this corruption. Before we go too far, I really don't want this to become a big thing. And apparently, a big driver of this is state employee income. Oh, that's interesting. We're paying our government officials too much or too little. I wonder if we can find that out real quick. I want to know. Uh, it's about middle of the road, so it's the, the jury is out on that one. But, well, the thought here is, if you pay them a ton of money, then are they not going to be inclined to be corrupt because you don't need to bribe them because they're already well paid? Or does that mean that there's so much money f centralized in the government that they just get as much as they want? I, I don't know. That's a good question. I guess you could make an argument for either one, but either way. So that's a big driver here. We could try to reduce uh, state employee income a little bit if we wanted to, as opposed to the private sector. But either way, for now, let's try to do something that tackles corruption. So higher wages... Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Higher wages must reduce this. Okay, so apparently the more money that state employees make, the less likely they are willing to accept bribes because they don't need it. Got it. Okay. Education, decentralization, jury trials, legal aid, civil service commission. Now, that's something new. Let's see if we can find that in the uh, policy ideas grouping here. By the way, you can see there's a lot of new stuff. Like, a lot of freaking new stuff, and it's incredible. Even in a continental union, the freaking EU is a part of this game now. Welfare, lots of cool stuff there. Economy, but I think we're going for law and order, right? There it is, Civil Service Commission. A civil service commission has more or less the power to hire, promote, or remove public service officers in contrast to a spoils system where these officers are appointed by the head of government. The commission can also make the public sector more meritocratic and prevent corruption. Well, I like the idea of more meritocratic, but still, it also decreases the state employees' incentives to support the ruling party. So we're probably going to upset a lot of state employees. 
So I, I, I guess this means it's an independent, non-political organization that appoints um, heads of departments and stuff for the government. Not the executive branch itself, but like... Gee, I have no idea. Um, what about things like, let's suppose for the United States, uh, would would a civil services commission appoint um, the uh, the Depar the secretary of education, for example? Is that how that kind of thing would work? I guess it depends on how much how widespread it is. I'm not especially familiar with this and what exactly it means. Maybe we have something like that kind of in the United States, and I'm just not paying attention. I'm not. I'm not especially sure, but okay. So, we can get a lot of this, and it actually goes a long way to preventing corruption and reducing sexism and racial tension. The problem is, the state employees will despise me. Now, that's interesting, because if I am going for a more free market capitalist style of play here, uh, I'm probably going to be moving more and more things toward the private markets anyway, and reducing the number of state employees on the docket. So, because I'm going for a more capitalist playthrough, this actually kind of works for me. Maybe not this much, but it actually kind of works. As opposed to if I were playing socialist, uh, this could be a serious problem. And I guess, actually, because you're so reliant upon state employees, maybe in a socialist government, there's sort of an inevitability that you will have uh, some corruption. I'm not too sure. That's interesting, though. I suppose I can make some commentary on that, since you all know that I'm not a socialist. But uh, I, think I'll, I think I'll stick out of that landmine for now. Let's go for something kind of middle of the road here. All appointments will be overseen by a civil service commission. They cannot remove them or promote them, but they can at least look at the appointments. And that is acceptable to me. State employees are going to be very, very angry, but this does help to reduce three negative events for the cost of less than one billion Kronos. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that's pretty good. Now it is year two, so I suppose before we go too much further, we probably should take a look at reshuffling the cabinet. So let's go ahead and do that right now, I suppose. We need to hire a foreign policy minister. Uh, we're only playing on 60% difficulty, so I don't care if it's perfect. Farmers and environmentalists? Um, yeah, all right, we can kind of go with that one. We need a welfare person, ethnic minorities, and conservatives. That's a little bit... No, that's going to be really hard to make work. Uh, farmers and parents? Okay, I guess. Economy minister? If you have not seen my playthroughs before, I talk about this a lot more, but um, highly, highly recommend... This could kind of work for me. Highly recommend that you are hiring based on sympathies, not just on their current political power. Tax. Trade unionists and socialists, not a chance. Religious and capitalists, probably not religious. Ethnic minorities, no, no. Uh, liberal and ethnic minorities, kind of works, even though he doesn't have as much for now. He's a very good campaigner, though, so that's something. Public services. Do -do 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 -do. Socialists, no. No, no, no. Trade union, nope. Gotta find someone better. Self-employed? Religious conservatives. Uh-oh. I don't think I see very many good public services options here. I think we have to go for the self-employed religious. Self-employed kind of works. The rest, not so much. All right, Bjorn, I guess we're going to hire you. Though you're not my first choice. Law and order. New? Uh, no. We don't have a lot of good options here, I'm afraid. Oh, boy. I kind of wish I had hired Clara for a different thing, but I didn't... I didn't I didn't sit down and plan this ahead of time. Usually I would. Motorists and liberal, I guess we could do. All right, and then there's transportation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Maybe. That's okay, I guess. Environmentalist liberal might be better. Let's go for this guy. All right, so that's going to be our cabinet. Uh, we're going to produce 26 capital per turn, and as we continue to social engineer the country toward being more liberal capitalist. Uh, we're going to have to have some environmentalist, of course, and stuff like that. I think it's going to naturally start swinging to our favor, so. All right. Hey, sexism is at an end. Well, that was easy. And also, alcohol abuse is over as well. See, all I took was a year of propaganda and, I don't know, beating up on men. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't really know why Sweden was labeled as a sexist country to begin with. I don't really know the earnings gap. Uh, not the wage gap, but the earnings gap between men and women in Sweden to begin with. I, I don't really know. But either way, it's gone. So, huzzah. Uh, apparently, the Civil Services Commission was able to take care of that for me. Great. Custody over children. With increasing divorce rates, we need to decide the principles for custody of children. In those cases where both parents are suitable, but cannot agree with each other. Single custody. Conservatives prefer single custody. Children will perform better at school if they stay with the same parents. Joint custody. Liberals prefer joint, which would make men and women more equal as parents, as well as in the workplace. Well, we obviously I'm going to go with this one. I'm kind of kind of confused on this one. Do I don't is this really a conservative issue? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever heard conservatives really talking about 
a parents have to stay with one ch sorry children have to stay with only one parents and that's better for them usually i hear conservatives talking more about how important marriage is and how important it is that people stay together because children uh statistically perform the best and develop the best when they're in uh two parent households but apparently apparently conservatives like single custody uh, I, maybe that's true in Sweden or somewhere else. It's just not what I've ever heard in the United States. Either way, joint custody it shall be. All right, we still have a pretty sizable surplus right now. We've lost a lot of the vote, surprisingly, but okay. The capitalists are especially angry with me, which I find very interesting. But all right, let's deal with some stuff one, one, one step at a time. One step at a time, can't get too far ahead of myself. We did finally end alcohol abuse. So you know what? No more strong restrictions on beer or low-strength beer, we are going to bring back the uh, alcohol law to a minimum drinking age of 21. Same as we had before, now that the event is gone, now that we've crossed that stop trigger, I'm not worried about it. So congratulations, Sweden. You can drink your, um, I don't know, what do, what do the Swedes drink? Is there like some sort of special national sort of favorite alcohol in Sweden? I have no idea. I would imagine due to the proximity to uh, Russia and other... Uh, region, the rest of that region, that perhaps vodka is quite common, but I really have no idea. I know I've got some Swedish viewers, I saw you guys in the last uh, video. Tell me, what do you guys drink? Or do you drink? Is that even a thing? I imagine it is, but I have no idea. Alright, you know one other thing I want to look at is the work safety law. Oh yeah, okay. So this is pretty, uh, pretty darn high right now. So having really high work safety laws actually make trade units very happy. If we reduced it, we could get what? What would we get out of this? Because this is very high for me right now. Well, I'm looking at productivity, and I'm kind of thinking that could be good. This is a drag on our productivity right now. Our, our work safety laws are too strict. Hmm. If we were to reduce this... Now, here's something that's interesting. It actually increases both self-employed and trade unionist membership by reducing this. Usually those two are kind of polar opposites, but it actually increases both. Fascinating. Let's suppose we brought it down to about 90 million kronos. Kronos, whatever. So, productivity would go up by about 5.5%-ish. That's not bad. Health goes down ever so slightly, but not much. Rail usage goes up, which is good, because we actually want to reduce our car usage. And apparently our military gets a little bit stronger. That's interesting. Now, I don't want to bring it down to zero. I mean, we could, but that... I'm looking at the productivity primarily, and it looks like it's on an exponential curve. This is about where I think we can get the most benefit out of the work safety law without hurting our productivity too much, and our health. So let's go ahead and change that. It only costs one political capital, which is practically nothing. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to look at, something new, dementia. Now let's see. Dementia, let's see. Hope for cure through stem cell research or genetic engineering. Meanwhile, the elderly should keep their minds active through public libraries or religious practice. And there there's, there's this misspelling again. Um, hmm... Stem cell research or genetic engineering, those are things. We could we could invest in that, but not quite yet. I think we do something a little bit less controversial. So we're trying to give the old people um, something to do mentally, right? They've retired, and their body starts to fall apart, and their brain kind of follows with dementia. That's sort of what's going to happen here. We're going to try to give them something to keep their me them mentally alert. And apparently, public libraries, so they read a lot, can help. Okay, that makes some sense. And interestingly enough, religious membership also helps. Uh, I guess I guess religious membership helps keep them mentally alert in this. Okay. Hmm. Also, reducing obesity and alcohol consumption would help, probably. And I guess our health is... No, our health is actually pretty good. I'm surprised that it's not uh, having a negative impact on the, the dementia here, but okay. Okay. You know what? Let's do something very non-controversial for now. See what it can do for us. I know we like public libraries. It's going to cost me a little less than $3 billion, but that's fine. This increases our education, equality, retired or happy, and it reduces dementia by 9%. Let's see how much that's able to do. I like the rest of these effects. It only costs me money. So that's certainly not terrible. Uh, you know what? While we're at public services, the only other thing I can think of doing right now... Well, was it there? Wait a minute. Where's art subsidies? You'd think that'd be a thing. I was thinking I want to increase my liberalism membership. Oh, we already have it. There it is. Okay. Yeah, all right. So let's invest a little bit more in the arts. Spend a little bit of that money. One of the reasons I like doing art subsidies is because it increases your liberalism membership. And as I said before, we are trying to do a bit of social engineering here. And I have to be constantly making progress on increasing the membership of my chosen groups. So that's what we're going to do. It's not going to cost me a lot of political capital, but we will get an extra... 
eh, almost 3%, 2.7% ish of uh, liberals. That's pretty good. It also increases tourism, foreign relations, and so on. Capitalists are a little bit peeved, but not much. Uh, let's save the rest of our political capital and move on and see what we can get here. Hey, the teacher shortage is at an end. Excellent. So education is to start going up a lot, which means uh, apparently the uh, school voucher program seems to have worked exactly as intended. Booyah. Blizzard slows down the nation. Uh-oh. Freezing temperatures, harsh winds, and droves of snow have brought traffic and production to a halt. Energy demand soars. This will be costly. Ouch! Our energy efficiency plummets. Traffic congestion goes way up. Oh my god, more people are going to die on the roads and productivity goes down. This is terrible. Ooh, that's going to have a huge drag on the GDP. Okay. And also, private security has come to an end. Which I guess means that crime is now under control enough that people don't feel the need to go and uh, hire their own guards. So, okay, I guess. It was a good event, technically, but I guess, I guess it's not necessary anymore. Corruption is going down slightly thanks to the Civil Service Commission, which is still taking full effect. So that's something at the very least. Road accidents. Yeah, I'm expecting that to go way up due to the blizzard. Kind of unfortunate. Dementia, not taking effect yet. So we'll see what happens there. Doctor Strike is still going down as more and more people leave the trade unions because they're losing their jobs. Obesity still sucks. We're going to have to find ways to deal with that. Tooth decay, kind of in the same boat there. Black market has gone down, okay. Air pollution's not doing so good. Labor shortage. Labor shortage. Now that's something we could try to help improve a little bit. By relaxing our immigration laws at the border. Right now we're doing biometric checks, which is reducing immigration by um, about 33%. If we reduce this down to, I don't know, let's just say, um, not quite that low. Let's say about here, so some simple passport checks. Reduce it by about half. So we'll get an extra 16% immigration, which is not excessive. I mean, it's a lot, but it's not excessive. It's okay. Makes the liberals a little bit happier. It upsets patriots, but it makes ethnic minorities happier. Makes tourism easier. Reduces corruption. Uh, actually improves the black market. Now that's interesting. I guess because uh, immigrants are bringing with them illegal goods for the black market. Either way, I think this is actually going to be a good change for us. For now, at least. I don't want to reduce it all the way down to minimum. That might have some unintended consequences. But at the very least, that does seem somewhat helpful. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you know what? While we're at it, let's go ahead and pass the immigrant language courses. Since we know that more people are going to be coming to Sweden, I know that that's going to bring with them a lot of racial tension. Let's give them some free courses uh, sponsored by the government to try and help teach them the Swedish language, which, you know, I would love to learn myself, but... uh. No one's giving me free courses, but anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and do that so we can reduce the racial tension so they can integrate as peacefully as possible. I have no idea how many immigrant events have been added into the game. I'm just trying to preempt some of them, just sort of based on common sense, and make sure that they don't cause any problems. All right, special needs only, subsidized courses, free of charge, universal. This is going to upset the Patriots a fair bit, but liberals like it, education goes up, and racial tension stays nice and low, which is very good for me. So we're going to go ahead and pass that. It's going to cost me a few billion more Kronos, but that's about it. Anything else we want to do to improve the economy, even though we have a blizzard? Um, ooh, we can get the... Uh, yes, yes, yes! Let's get the Enterprise Investment Scheme. This is still very good in the base game. Is it good in the mod pack? Let's find out. Yes! Yes, it is exactly something I want to do. Okay, Enterprise Investment Scheme is amazing. So, it's a tax break to the wealthy individuals who invest their money in startup companies, which are based around the country, so that small companies eventually grow into larger ones that stimulate the economy. Basically, it's, um, it's sort of a tax break on venture capitalism in a lot of ways. Uh, something kind of like that. So it's indirect, but it tries to really encourage people to invest in the economy, which is going to be great for us as capitalists. Not only do the self-employed like it, so do the capitalists. Socialism membership goes down by 8%, which is fantastic. A lot of people start opening their own businesses, so self-employed goes up. High earnings goes up. That's Is that new? That might be new. Computer industry. Now, it doesn't impact the GDP directly. It used to. The Enterprise Investment Scheme used to give you like a 6% GDP boost. It was always good. Now it boosts the computer industry, which is good, but also comes with some downsides, and we'll look at that in just a second. Productivity, however, also goes up, which I see as very crucial. So the computer industry here, it does increase the GDP. It does increase liberalism and self-employed. Perfect. I like it. 
But because more people are working on their computers, it also increases obesity. It shifts more uh, jobs toward uh, away from the away from the manufacturing jobs, so the Rust Belt gets worse, and we have more industrial automation as a result. Some good and some bad. Something to consider as you're trying to balance out your economy in this particular mod pack. All right, moving on. Let's see what else we can do. In insemination. Oh God, of, of single women. Okay, the technique of test tube babies has been used for years, but only provided to couples. Some single women who want to bear a child without a known father get support from liberals. Conservatives are skeptical, though. So do we allow this or not? Each person should be the master of their own body, argues some particular person, apparently. It's safe, controlled, even though we could prohibit it, we cannot prevent women from getting impregnated the old-fashioned way without the father's knowledge. I suppose that's true. Or, every child deserves to know their natural father, or at least have more than one parent. We cannot prevent all irresponsible people from having children, but at least some of them. Oh, that's interesting, because I actually have uh, some conflicting v opinions on this. So on one hand, we're going to go for kind of a more libertarian playthrough. I'm probably going to have to do this one. Uh, it's definitely more liberal. It probably improves women's lot a little bit. If the sexism event was still going on, this probably would help reduce it a little bit more. Uh, but obviously we don't know anymore now that it's gone. So we could do this. Here's the thing, though. As it's kind of alluded to before, it really is important, based on all the, the child development studies that I have read, it's really, really important for, for children to have uh, a two-parent household. Like, they, they generally will perform better. They'll become uh, the more balanced uh, adults later in life. Uh, they're less likely to develop behavioral disorders or something along those lines. There's a lot of downsides to being a single parent. Not that I think these women are being, like, deliberately negligent in any way. I'm sure they do the best they could, but there are some serious downsides to this, and there are massive long-term cultural implications as well. Huh. So we're going to go for this, but I don't, I don't know if I would ban it, but I certainly wouldn't encourage it in real life. Certainly wouldn't encourage that. I, I really, really do think that it's very important for children to be raised in a two-parent household. If you can. I really think that. But that's my personal beliefs based on a lot of different studies. I'd highly encourage people to go read it if you disagree with me. Or you can provide your, your dissenting opinion as much as you want. That's fine. You know, I don't, I don't look down upon single-parent households. I think they do the best they can. I just think it's very difficult for the parents and for the children. Anyway, moving on before we get too far into that. Um, all right. We can pass a bunch of new policies. We're getting to the end of this video. So I think we should pass... I don't know. Let's see. I want to reduce tooth decay, and I bet you by eating healthier food, we can try to make that easier. What if we passed a health food subsidy, which is very, very cheap for us, but can go a long way to improving the health without having to touch the uh, state healthcare services and spend billions upon billions of Cronus we can build and spend only a few hundred million and get massive health benefits. The poor do better, obesity goes way down, tooth decay goes down, and the farmers are slightly happier as well. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me, okay. Uh, you know what, while we're on that, same sort of idea, let's do a healthy eating campaign. And that just improves health and reduces obesity. We're trying to persuade people to eat healthy. We're not banning sugary foods, we're just trying to make it a little bit more financially incentivizing, and we're trying to persuade them through marketing to eat a little bit better and take care of themselves. And you know what, while we're at it, we actually kind of like to do something similar with the country, uh, Keep the Country Tidy campaign. Just improve the environment and make the environmentalists a little bit happier. It costs me practically nothing, but it can go a long way. And frankly, since I'm already doing so many public services, what else do I want to do? Let's take a look-see here. Oh, the Social Justice Foundation, absolutely. We have to pass this one. It's just a straight up increase to liberalism membership. I mean, I have uh, some perhaps unorthodox opinions on uh, social justice and stuff like that, but at least in this game, it's still good. If you're going for a liberal playthrough, it's kind of a necessity, so we're going to have to do that. Anything else we want to do here that's really good? Um, I don't know. I mean, this is not there, maybe. What about... Gotta find something good. What's something good? Financial transactions tax? Well, now that's interesting. We can tax the financial sector if it gets too strong. Ah, I'm not sure we want to do that right now, but it's certainly an option. Hmm. Nature reserves. Look how much stuff there is, guys. I'm not even kidding. Look at this. Planned economy, carbon capture, eco-domes, financial regulation, intellectual property laws, monetary policy. 
Oh, I have to check this out. Okay. In most cases, the amount of money is handled by a central bank. In the United States case, the Federal Reserve, I assume there's something similar in Sweden. In extreme cases, politicians might intervene. High inflation... Oh my god, we're gonna control inflation rates. This mod pack is so cool! High inflation provokes people with a lot of savings, especially the retired, but might be the only way to escape a debt crisis. Deflation strengthens the currency, but impedes the export industry and makes debts heavier. There's a thought. Now, we are we have some debt, but we are paying it down as time goes on. Let's try it. I want to see what happens here. I want to see this. Okay, so starting off with your first monetary policy, it does nothing. But if we make it stronger with lots of inflation, the currency strength goes way down. The wealthy are very upset because all their tons of money suddenly means practically nothing. But trade unionists like it because we become a very um, export-focused market as our uh, devalued currency means that we're able to just throw products out into the uh, into the um uh into the global market pretty easily farmers apparently like it as well wait what's this minimal inflation moderate inflation severe inflation release the kraken what uh, okay okay sure and if we go the other way though inflation stable currency what hang on minimal inflation oh we're still on minimal inflation never mind okay stable currency minimal deflation moderate deflation this makes farmers and trade unions very unhappy because we are unable to export because our currency is a little bit too strong. People aren't able to buy our goods as well because there's an unfavorable currency exchange rate to the Swedish krona. So that's a bit of a problem. There are some serious uh, repercussions for making, going, uh, devaluing your currency, sorry, deflating your currency too much. However, our currency strength goes way, way up. So we're going to go ahead and move toward... Gee, I have no idea. Let's just do a kind of a basic stable currency. I want to see what it means. I don't know what currency strength is, but let's pass that. Let's see, where's the economy? There you are. Okay, currency strength. The relative strength of your currency on the global markets. A strong economy will raise this value, which will make exports less competitive and reduce export income, as well as reducing the spending power of tourists and then vice versa. International trade goes down the stronger it is. Tourism goes down the stronger it is, right? That makes sense. It's one of the reasons less Americans are, were able to go to Europe um, when the euro was a lot stronger because, well, currency differences, whereas a lot of Europeans could go to America. Now that's kind of changing a little bit as the euro gets a little bit weaker and the United States dollar gets uh, stays pretty strong, but even so. Oil prices, high earnings, private pensions do better with a strong currency. That sounds... that makes sense. So do wages. Huh, okay, that's really cool. I didn't realize that was in the game, but I do like that a lot. Let's pass a smart meter program since the blizzard is killing our energy efficiency. We'll pass that real quick. Uh, we'll also go to a couple more economic, you know, programs. Let's do a trade council. We'll improve the international trade and foreign relations. And we'll also do a business council. Why not? That should improve our capitalist membership and also increase the GDP by about 3%. But that's all we have time for today. I know it's, another, again, a pretty long video, but there's so much to cover. Oh, God, I, I, it's, it's still too much for me to take in, but I'm having a heck of a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave your comments with suggestions and ideas as to what I ought to do. And uh, if you want to challenge me on some stuff that I've said, I will occasionally bring up some political opinions. And if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. As long as you are respectful, I'm happy to engage in a discussion with you. Subscribe if you are new. Be sure to hit that like button. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.